Welcome to Today with Dr. J, where I give you the guidance and tools to figure out what works for you in your recovery. My name is Dr. D. Jaffe, and I'm here to help you live happier, more purposefully, and without limits. I tend to ruffle some feathers for doing this, but I do away with the notion of once an addict, always an addict, because I believe that anyone can beat their addiction with the right mindset, tools, support, and education. Nothing can stand in your way to success. You don't have to commit to anything but action. You don't have to have anything but motivation. Whether you want to quit, drink less, or simply become more mindful around mental health and addiction, I'm here for you. There are so many times that either I don't agree with the choice my wife is making. We have three kids to raise. Sometimes I don't agree with the choices she makes for them. She doesn't agree with the choices I make. We don't agree on hotel rooms. We don't agree on routes of travel. Like the amount of stuff you can disagree about in a trip is pretty intense. And I can give a bunch of examples, but I'm going to give one. I'm probably about to give one that works in my favor, but whatever. We landed in Madrid and we were driving to Porto in Portugal. Even in that part, Sophie initially was like, I don't want to get off a plane and get in a car and drive six hours. I was like, well, I don't want to spend $900 after we just got off a plane flying one hour. That was already a semi fight, but then we get in the car. And so we decided on the way to stop at some small town in Spain and sleep because we had just traveled 15, 16 hours, get one night of rest and then go to Portugal. We couldn't agree on what kind of hotel to stay in. American hotels, like you kind of get used to the American hotels having a pool and a gym and all these, um, all these conveniences. It's not a thing in Europe. So I was able to find a hotel that had a pool and it was in an old castle. Like it was beautiful, right? Like on hotels.com, it looked great. I had wanted a different one. So Sophie really wanted a pool. We were getting to the hotel at like 8.30 PM, leaving the next day at 11. Sophie really wanted a pool. I found this hotel. It's like twice what I want to pay for a hotel, but whatever, we're just going to deal with it. We get to the hotel and it's in an old castle. It has a pool, but I don't know that you would want to go swimming in this pool. It looks really nice in the pictures. It has, you know, the rooms are probably, I don't think they've been updated in 80 years, 90 years. Like it's an old castle. It's what you're living in. And so it was really funny to see my wife's reaction when we walked into the place. And it took everything I had in me to not go, I told you, we should have stayed right. Like everything, everything I had in me to not just go, I told you we should have just stayed in like an Airbnb that was nicer in an apartment close by. What I got to see is every moment, every moment in the trip was like this from hotels to what restaurant we would go to eat in to how we would spend our day and what we would go see and what we wouldn't go see. And I had moments and opportunities. I ended up sleeping on a trendle bed in that room, in that fancy castle. I don't know if you're going to know what a trendle bed is, but it's those like portable mattresses you pull from under another bed because Sophie felt bad for two kids having to sleep on that bed. So I slept on a trendle bed while the baby is in the bathroom and the two kids and my wife are sleeping on the, we'll call it a queen size bed in this old castle where you walked on the floor and the entire room shook. Like it was, it was the closest thing to a nightmare you can have in a castle to sleep overnight after 17 hours of a trip. And I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I showed up perfectly. I was annoyed. I was so unhappy. Like I could have slept in a nice bed. We never got to use the pool, by the way, because, you know, we got there at eight, left at 11. The pool didn't open till 1030. But the trip was full of these things. And what it reminded me, I get a version of that in my everyday life living in this house. It's just that I get the little escapes. I get the little moments to have my own choices. And what we had, we had to do and what we got to do on this trip is learn how to talk to each other, how to function with each other with the lowest level of friction throughout the thing. It was bad in the beginning. I'm not going to lie to you. It was and by bad. I mean, you know, me getting annoyed and pissed off that I've got to sleep on this little bed, et cetera. And then over time we figured it out and we smoothed out the edges. I was able to realize, which is really important for me in a relationship. What are the lines that I'm not willing to cross? Like, I want to have a comfortable bed. I realized that on that, in that hotel room. It's like, I'm not, I, I'll compromise on what else is in the hotel, but I need to be able to sleep at night, right? So that was one thing. The next thing is I wanted to have more of a say in what kind of town we ended up in. So the things that mattered to Sophie came to the surface. 
She wanted to have some conveniences and she wanted to have some of the things she was used to from the States. How do I learn to give her that while also asking for and getting what I wanted? And it took us, you know, we were there for two weeks. And so we stayed in like seven different places. It took us a few tries to get it right. And what I learned in my relationship more than anything else is to be agile. I used to live a life where I thought that whenever something was true, it was going to be true forever. Here we are fighting again about, about the freaking bed and the hotel room. This trip is going to suck. That's kind of the, the mentality that I used to bring to my relationship. But that's a me thing. I, part of my addictive tendencies back in the day, were centered around the fact that when something's going wrong, I think I'm going to be stuck there for, forever. And it really scares me, right? Because I can't see a way out in that moment. And so I'm, I'm afraid there is no way out. But I've learned that's not true in my relationship. I learned, I've learned that you can always pivot and you can always adjust. And so it's my job to identify these patterns and go, okay, my wife needs convenience. I need make my list. How do I start making choices that allow her to get what I, what she wants while I get what I want? The last three places we stayed in, literally, my wife is not good at giving compliments. If there's one thing she's not good at, it's giving compliments. She's an amazing woman, not great at giving compliments. The last three places we stayed in, she said, thank you so much for choosing these places. They were perfect. And it wasn't because I got smarter along the way. It was, it was just because I kept trying to pay attention. Like, what is bothering her? What does she need? And how do I allow her to have that while I get what I want? You hear in negotiations or in business a lot about this concept of win-win. I'll, I'll just go a level farther than win-win. It's not about win-win. It's about, I want to have a good experience on this trip, right? I want to enjoy my relationship. And if I want to enjoy my relationship, what I've learned over time is the more friction I can reduce, the less uncomfortable I can make it for other people. And the more I can take care of them of what they need, everything else goes more smoothly. By the end, I didn't have to pay attention to what, like, I didn't have to ask her anymore what she needed in these rooms, right? I didn't need to ask her what she wanted along the way. I, I learned it. I was able to take it in, but that took effort on my part, right? I was, I'll be honest, I was looking to save money and, and just get through the hotels like let's just as long as there's a comfortable bed and it's in a good spot i'm i was happy that didn't make her happy and that was the adjustment that i got to make over time thanks for watching and i hope you found the lessons helpful in your recovery click below to like comment and subscribe plus if you want to find out more about the work that we do at ignited visit ignted.com for more